Jeff Hyland, one of the most loved, accomplished, and respected real estate brokers of all time, has passed away at the age of 75. Here we're coming up on the house we're about to put on the market for about 75. We have sold virtually every house at the end of the street. We have sold this three times in the last two years. This estate here, we sold uh, for $70 million. If this is what people are people are looking for, I'm happy to give it to them. For anybody in the real estate business or for anybody who just follows the luxury real estate market closely, Jeff was an icon in the business with decades of experience under his belt and having handled several billion dollars in real estate sales over his career. The news came as a bit of a shock because Jeff was privately battling with cancer for about a year leading up to his passing, but ever since then, everybody has been very vocal about how much Jeff was loved and what an impact that he made on the real estate world. In today's episode, we are going to look at Jeff's history and career as a luxury real estate broker, and we'll take a look at the successful brokerage Hilton and Highland that he helped found 30 years ago. Jeff Highland was born February 16th, 1946, which made him 75 years old when he passed. He grew up in a town called Little Homebly, which is a neighborhood in Westwood, Los Angeles, between Beverly Hills and UCLA. Apparently, he was so hyperactive as a kid that his mother made a deal with him. If he managed to stay in school every day until 2 p.m. rather than being sent home for misbehaving. Then each Friday she would take him on the trolley for a burger and then to CC Brown's afterwards for a Sunday. So to all you parents out there who have a hyperactive kid, don't stress, could be the early signs of a wildly successful business person. As far as college education is concerned, Jeff was accepted into Cornell's School of Hotel Administration in New York, but it wasn't long before he was drawn back to California, which my understanding was largely fueled by him just wanting to get back to warmer weather and surf. Once Jeff moved back to California, he finished his education at the United States International University in San Diego, earning a business administration degree. He ended up getting his real estate license in 1975 at the age of 28, starting at Coldwell Banker, and his first client was an Italian-American film producer named Dino De Laurentiis, a client that he was only able to get because as early as his first year as a real estate agent, Jeff always focused on relationship building versus just assuming clients would fall into his lap. The fact that as a brand new broker, Jeff Highland at the age of 28 was already building relationships with celebrity public figures to sell homes to says a lot about the foundation of his business. He kept focusing on that relationship building throughout his career, having served as president of the Beverly Hills Board of Realtors, the president of the Los Angeles County Board of Real Estate, and the state director for the California Association of Realtors. Lately, Jeff Highland was of course known for his involvement in the power brokerage Hilton at Highland that he founded with Rick Hilton back in 1993. Jeff at that point had about 20 years of experience as a real estate broker under his belt working for several firms, and Rick was most known at that point for his 100-year-old multi-billion dollar family empire Hilton Hotels, which now consists of over 6,000 hotel properties over 119 countries. The story section of Hilton and Highland's webpage described the company as privately held, steadfastly independent, and unfettered by investors or outside shareholders since they were founded almost 30 years ago. They go on to say that with their sole office in Beverly Hills, they are perhaps the top producing boutique brokerage in the world. Now you guys know that I love to fact check these companies' claims about their performance, but I scoured the web and I had a hard time finding a list that ranks the top boutique brokerages in the world. Of course, the franchise brands like Keller Williams and Remax, Coldwell Banker and Sotheby's are among the top brokerages with anywhere from 100 billion to 300 plus billion dollars in annual volume. But you can't compare Hilton and Highland to a brokerage like Remax since Hilton and Highland literally only has one office in Beverly Hills. For comparison's sake, we can look at the market statistics section of Hilton and Highland's webpage, which which shows that they do about $3.5 billion per year in volume with $22 million in average volume per agent and $5.9 million for their average price per transaction. Their $3.5 billion in annual sales number might seem a little small in comparison to Remax's $300 plus billion in annual volume, but holy smokes, the fact that the average agent in that office is doing $22 million per year in volume is insane. Remember, real estate agents usually 
bring in about 3% of commission for the total volume of their sales. So at $22 million in total volume per year per agent, that means that these agents are making around $660,000 in commissions per year each. Speaking of the team's agents, they have about 150 people on their team in total. So it's a massive brokerage for just one office. And these agents have networks that not only span the LA County, Orange County, Santa Monica, Malibu, Brentwood, Bel Air, and Pacific Palisades regions, but they also have reach that spreads worldwide, which is extremely important, especially when a large percentage of Hilton and Highland's business is done off market and in house. So Hilton and Highland's team of brokers, of course, is loaded with rock stars brokers who are extremely accomplished, who have record-setting sales. But there is one name that stands out on their list to me, that's for sure. You may have heard of Gary Gold. He originally set the record for the first residence in LA to sell for over a hundred million dollars, which happened to be the Playboy Mansion. And then to top that, he went on to beat his own record when he sold the Chartwell estate for a hundred and fifty million dollars. Because of those records, along with thousands of other sales throughout his career, Gary is internationally recognized as one of the top real estate agents on the planet. Jeff Highland and Rick Hilton clearly have a well-oiled machine and a world-class team here, and they reportedly had a great partnership as well. Jeff once said that he and Rick almost read each other's thoughts, and over their entire time working together, they never had one argument. So Jeff's passing was originally announced on the Hilton and Highland Instagram with a really nice photo of him and a caption that read, Hilton and Highland is devastated to announce the passing of our co-founder and president, Jeff Highland, on Wednesday. Wednesday, February 16th. We'd like to share this message from lifelong partner Lori Highland. As some of you may have known, Jeff has been privately battling cancer for the last year. I am thankful to all of you for sharing your wishes and prayers during Jeff's illness. Then she goes on to give a statement from Jeff's partner Rick that read, 30 years ago, Jeff and I started on this journey. Throughout, a great partnership and deep friendship were forged and Hilton and Highland emerged as a force in the industry. Jeff was a legend. His knowledge about real estate and architecture was unparalleled. Jeff's wife, Lori, was a painter actually, and she was always supportive of Jeff's grueling work schedule. She would help to have him leave his work at the office, and because of that, she was never super in touch with the day-to-day -day operations of Hilton and Highland. A ton of people responded to the Instagram announcements in the comments section with support from The Real Deal to, of course, Nikki and Paris Hilton, and thousands of others referring to him as one of the greatest, a legend, and stating that this is an immeasurable loss. With Jeff's extensive knowledge about the Beverly Hills real estate market, seeing he was born there and worked there for basically his entire life, he actually became an architectural historian and he wrote two books that highlighted some of the most renowned estates in the area. The first book was called The Estates of Beverly Hills, which he released back in 1984. And then his second book was a follow-up called The Legendary Estates of Beverly Hills, which was released almost 25 years later in 2008. As I was researching Jeff's story, and reading as much as I possibly could about his success, I noticed that there were a ton of people out there who looked at him as both a father figure and a mentor. And that doesn't surprise me at all because from what I can tell, he was not only a great businessman, but he was also really good at building his brand. He told LA Times in 2015, all said and done, it's your reputation that counts. Jeff Highland's brokerage handles countless luxury listings and he personally has been involved in several nine figure listings himself. Yes, by the way, you heard that right. Nine figures meaning $100 million or greater. Before we wrap the video today, I have to show you guys the listing section of the Hilton and Highland webpage just to give you an idea of how high caliber that this brokerage Jeff helped build really is. So check it out. These are just the listings that Hilton and Highland currently has for sale. So first up here, we have this listing called Casa Encantada. This one here says price upon request, which we all know is just a fancy way of saying, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. But last I knew, I think it was about two years back, this property did hit the market publicly for $225 million. So it's possible they dropped the price a little bit, but still regardless, it's a big listing. Next up here, we've got this 9650 Cedar Brook Drive property in Beverly Hills for $250 million. This place isn't even built yet, 
yet, but it's going to be 19 bedrooms, 33 bathrooms, and it's got 78,000 square feet of living space inside. Next up, we've got the manor here in Homebly Hills. This one, they're asking $165 million. The manor has 14 bedrooms, 27 bathrooms, and it's got 56,000 square feet of living space inside. Here's another massive listing at 10697 Soma Way in LA. This one, they're asking $78 million for. This house has eight bedrooms, 21 bathrooms, and 41,000 square feet of living space. And after that, I mean, you guys get the point here. We've got this one for $65 million in San Francisco. We've got this one for $65 million in Summerland. We've got another $65 million property in LA. They've got this cool new construction, 27,000 square foot home in Beverly Hills for $59 million. There's this stretch of land over here off Royalton Drive in Beverly Hills. This one, they're asking $50 million. I mean, the fact that this is just one small brokerage this representing every one of these properties is insane to me. Jeff wasn't just representing buyers and sellers of luxury real estate throughout his lifetime. He was a collector of real estate himself. Just some of his real estate holdings included a 40 acre estate in Agora Hills, an equestrian estate in Topanga Canyon, a Manhattan high rise condo, and a mid century modern home in Truesdale. Along with his love for real estate, he was passionate about philanthropy throughout his lifetime. And in his free time, he and his wife enjoyed reading, writing, horseback riding, and sailing. Jeff Highland has certainly left a mark on the Los Angeles real estate scene, and there is no doubt in my mind that he will be remembered forever. His business partner, Rick Hilton, put some remarks on his Instagram following the original announcement on the Hilton and Highland Instagram. On top of what Rick said on the Hilton and Highland post, he also said that, I joke that what Jeff had forgotten exceeded what most agents would ever learn. The loss of our friend, partner, and visionary is painful. With Jeff's passing, we will honor his legacy and continue the course. And on that note, may Jeffrey Highland rest in peace. Thank you so much for watching.